showtime. Here we are. Afternoon, Live again. everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the existential cuppa. Got the aircon on at better time today, so it's not so bad. <laughs> no, it's quite comfortable in here. It's lovely. Yeah. So uh, we're going to take on board one of the questions that was sent our way last week um, about what are we actually in control of? And okay. we thought we'd put that in the context of fear, control and personal freedom because they're kind of all interrelated. And I think, you know, the idea that most people have is that if they're in control, they have personal freedom. Yes. And so when we're feeling out of control and disempowered, we're kind of losing our personal freedom. And fear has a really great way of pushing us right out of the, and right out of the present moment. Control is an illusion anyway, so yeah. it's kind of all mixed up. It's all a bit weird. It is. So yeah. that's why we thought we'd bring it all together. So welcome if you're joining us live. Just uh, maybe drop your name in the comments, say good day, tell us where you're, where you're tuning in from. And, um, yeah, please put your comments and your questions in too so that we can um, engage in this as a conversation. I'll put my because, glasses on so I can read them. Yeah, I, I will try to read them from here. But before we launch right into it, shall I, um, shall I do our welcome, our acknowledgement? Indeed, I think yes, so. Yes, our, our, our normal start to the meeting. So I just take uh, a few moments now to um, pay honour and respect to the elders past, present and emerging and to give my deepest gratitude and heartfelt thanks to the traditional owners of this land, the Larrakia people, for their generous sharing of this beautiful country that I live and work on, for the sharing of the light, the people, the animals and the trees, the birds, all the life here and the sea that embraces us. And I seek to do spirit work here that's in harmony and perfect alignment with the existing deep spiritual connection of this place for the healing and enlightenment of all. Thank you. So now I'm feeling really grounded again. Mm. I love that. Connecting to and honouring the place that you live it's just such a grounding thing to do, mm. which is a really good, important. really good counterpoint to being in fear. Yes, mm. absolutely. I think so. It's a very good counterpoint. Yeah. So fear has been um, a recurring theme for us this year. Yes. And it's been a re recurring theme on Friday afternoons on the existential cuppa. It has been. And I guess it's just the nature of the beast of the early 2020s. Yes. Um, and I think, yeah, I think all of Australia understands fear now. All of the world, really. Yes. Well, yeah. yes, that's true. All of the world does, you know. And I think that what that that often is what makes it more potent because everybody's feeling it. So the energy is more out there. Mm. It's not just pockets of people, but it's actually all over the world and it's affecting how we all function. Yeah. It's making everything that much harder to do. Mm. Um, and it means that we're not in the present moment. We're you know, moving out into the future yeah. in the hope that we can somehow control that. Yeah. Um, and interestingly, we were talking before we started about the idea of, you know, when you're doing shadow work, you know, the things that are buried deep inside that we don't want to look at, yeah. often when it's time, they rise to the surface. So it's really interesting that the collective consciousness at the moment the, the uppermost thing is fear. Yeah. It is well and truly time for humanity in its current place of evolution to uh, work with fear, to work with fear on an individual level and on a collective level so that we can learn the skill of stepping out of fear and into personal freedom. Yeah, and not being, not being afraid of what if we let go of the fear which we associate with control. If we let go of that, it then allows us to not need to manage or control what is going to happen or how it's going to happen. We can just allow for it to happen. We can flow, which I think most people don't do. And I think from a female perspective, um, feminine energy is all about flow. You know, mm. it's all about allowing uh, things to happen and then, you know, man you know, dealing with those things as they happen rather than worrying about what might happen or what might not happen. Um, and we all we all use so much energy mm. when we're fearful. 
um, mm. so much more nutrition. We use so much more effort just to function in our day, which is yeah. not great. So I wanted to have a look at the concept of control. Mm. I mean, what is control? What happens when we're not in control? What does it mean to be out of control? I think control is a contrived concept. I agree. Yeah, it's a also, constructed. Yeah. Um, you know, that there, there is this idea that uh, there is a certain way of being and if we're not following that certain way of being, then we're out of control. Yeah. If we're not thinking along a similar line to other people, then we're out of control. If we aren't seeing our life move forward the way we anticipate and expect, then we're out of control. And all of these things generate fear yes so you know the and that is the basic human instinctive response to the unknown yes i mean i think fear is an a, it's a important response you know if we look at it from a survival perspective you know if we go back to caveman times fear is a um we needed fear to recognize danger it was a way of recognizing danger fight flight response or threat response is a biological you know Imperative. Re yeah, yeah. representation of of fear you know yeah. it's a physical reaction i think that it comes down to um individually it comes down to working out what you're fearful of like what what where are your boundaries what's pushing your buttons um why do you feel like you need to feel control um i mean control itself ultimately is just an illusion it doesn't really make any sense Mm. And this is kind of the, the pathway that um, Adair's question was leading us to last week was, well, what are we actually in control of? Oh, yeah. And I think that that's a really valid question. And speaking as a reformed control freak, well, nearly reformed <laughs> <laughs> control freak, um, that, you know, if things weren't unfolding at exactly the right time in exactly the right way, I did feel out of control. Um and often, you know, there were things beyond my control that threw my world, my routine and my expectations off track. So really this whole idea of control is it's just a furphy. It's yeah. just an illusion. It's a Because construct. seriously, the only thing that we have control of is how we choose to, to respond yeah. to change. Yeah. Yeah, that's and I think that's the only control really that we do have. And even have. that's an illusion too yeah. because ultimately if we're in flow, we don't need to react. We just need to be mm. and things will occur as they need to occur. So we don't actually need to do anything. And it's not so much reaction, it's responding. We do have a choice about how we respond. Yeah. Um, and so it's not that instinctive, instantaneous reaction. It's that ability to actually see or to see say. what's actually going on, mm. to see the truth of the moment, to be in our, using our skill of discernment to actually see the truth, yeah. um, which requires great dedication and great practice it does, to be yeah. able to see through the illusion of fear because fear is so strong. Yeah. So how does that relate to personal freedom? It's a really good question. It is a really good question. You got, you got any ideas out there? Each individual person, I think. I think it has their own individual answer to that question, to what Absolutely. that actually means. You know, and I'm wanting to leap in with my answer. Go on. All right, well, my, leap, ans leap. my answer is <laughs> that if you have the opportunity to be in control of your response, then that, in fact, is your personal freedom. And you, have, you can either choose to go into an expansive response in the vibration of love, which in itself would enhance your personal freedom even further, or you can choose to respond in the contracting vibration of fear and close yourself down and lose even more of your personal freedom. For me personally, that's where these choices come back to. That's where all of these meanings, all of these um, concepts, tie back to personal freedom in the way we choose to interpret truth okay does that make yeah. how does that sit no i think that's that sits well yeah i don't think that's the same as how i see it but i do think that it is a, a really good way to describe um this situation and and to you know make the differentiation between the fear um and control. I think mm. that's a really good way of doing it. 
I think for me, I'm much more loose. I'm less structured. Uh, for me, it's about flow. If we're in flow, we don't need fear. Mm -hmm. Flow allows us to be in the present moment. It allows for us, you know, so practicing present moment for me actually negates fear um, and it lessens the need for control. Mm. Um, and I think throughout our entire life, no matter what space we're in or what point within our life we're in, our capacity to uh, learn uh, from those experiences is the real is the really important thing. And it Absolutely. always just comes back to trust. For me, it always comes back to just trusting yourself to know and and that you're in flow and that you don't need to be controlling flow flow i often will say to my patients you know think of yourself lying in a river lying on a lilo floating down the river mm. and you're in flow and sometimes there are eddies and sometimes there are rapids and sometimes there is deep water and sometimes you fall off and you've got to get yourself back on and you know sometimes you park over on the bank and you know have a bit of a walk around and then go back on it doesn't really matter how we how it works it's more important that each individual person knows how it works for them Mm. You know, I don't think there's any one big construct of anything. And I think the interpretation of um, it is a very personal thing too. Absolutely. Um, and I love your illustration of being on a river and also the um, implication there that if you're in flow, fear can't exist. No. As soon as fear is in your world, you are no longer in flow. Yeah. So it is actually flow is the same thing as being in the now yeah. so being in the present just com Indeed. completely present with the moment and being in the present moment i think like you said about personal freedom being in the present moment and recognizing that within the present moment there is no fear um because that's a future thing the the freedom we get from recognizing that the fact that our life becomes simpler by staying in 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 the present moment mm. um and so i think you know i spend a lot of time practicing present moment because it gives us that capacity to be free then to um you know create or manifest mm. and to master um other aspects of ourselves mm. um and to bring all of that into the flow you know i mean it's already there but to i suppose bring it into our conscious mind so that we are able to recognize all the values and all those things that we can offer and do um wherever we're wherever we are and whatever we're doing Absolutely. and value that see the importance and the value mm. of all of that mm. i think that's a really important thing and you know i, I think all of these are um perfectly valid mm. And we all deserve to feel that. But a part of me sitting here saying, you know, so people who are listening are going, yeah, these are really great abstract concepts. Mm -hmm. What does that actually mean when I'm sitting in the middle of it? You know, and yeah. th this is the thing. Um, we can talk about these abstract concepts, but the actual body felt experience of what it's like to recognise fear as an illusion. I think that's the first step. Is is the key yeah i think that's the very first step. yeah and it's really really hard to do <laughs> and when we're in the drama of it all it is yeah. really hard to see to recognize the fear in amongst all the other things but that is in fact the first step but if we're not but when we're feeling the fear we're not in it but if we go one step further back if we're feeling the fear we're not actually in the present moment that's right. and so we need to practice coming back into the present moment and how i do that is i sit i breathe and I bring my mind and my body back together. I reconnect everything back together, um, you know, and not just from the point of view of my intellectual mind but my, you know, my heart mind, my spiritual mind, my physical, everything, you know. I'm visualising it coming back together as I breathe back into my body and I can feel my body and I can feel my bottom sitting on the seat. I can feel my feet on the ground. I can feel my clothes on me. Bringing myself back to that present moment then allows for that awakening or that awareness that we can step outside of the the drama of it all and, and recognise, oh, I was feeling fear there um, and that's okay. You know, it's totally okay to feel everything because, you know, we have all these things. So if we start going, we shouldn't be doing that, we shouldn't be doing that, we're actually just creating more resistance mm. and more more stress in our body, which we don't want to do. We're actually trying to reduce that down. We're trying to feel like um, we have the capacity to actually 
manage or moderate our life the way that we need to. And I'm always, I'm very big on the middle way. I'm very big on, you know, moderation is the key here mm. rather than extreme things to bring you back into the present moment. And so breath is a really easy, really cheap, really quick, really simple thing. And everybody's got one. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a really important thing to do. Yeah. So, I mean, we have talked about breath connection mm. before as a beautiful way to soothe the nervous system and to bring you back into the present moment. Um, and it's a beautiful way to consciously connect with that subconscious yeah. part that's doing the, the I'm going to get you out of trouble yeah. as fast as I can. Um, I did have a point to make and it's just completely gone out of my head. Well, it just occurred to me when you were talking then yeah. that, you know, for everybody in every situation, the approach that they will take will be different. So for mm. me, breath works. I think for each individual person, they need to find their means of bringing themselves back into the present moment. For some people, you know, it's uh, doing the dishes or for some people it's focusing their attention elsewhere. Meditation is a way of bringing the body back. Yoga is a way of bringing us back into the present moment. Mm. You know, that's the stepping, that's the beginning. And then this, the, the next step then is that when we're in the present moment, it's actually really easy to see that we're in the drama. And so we can actually step out of the drama and acknowledge and honour that fear that we're feeling or that need for control that we're feeling mm. because these patterns that have evolved over our lifetime are affecting how we respond to the environmental things that are going on. And I think um, that has quite a profound effect on how we um, we manage and that, you know, that mm. brings in the whole thing of not just... Um, traumas within this life but past traumas and genetic memory and you know uh genetic trauma and all this kind of stuff collective so, trauma yeah we're coming it. yeah we're coming into um you know an awareness about these things that gives us more ability to go oh okay well this is why i react this way this is why i form this belief oh i've got this belief and i didn't even know i had it mm -hmm. you know and all of this kind of stuff and it gives us back um our ability to 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 moderate and yeah. to adjust and yeah. to recognize our true self so i think you know what you said right at the beginning there was really key about us developing the skill of noticing first yes that's you know when we it's when we don't notice it that we stay stuck in the yeah. pattern it's when we start noticing the thoughts the behaviors the immediate reactions the um, body felt sensations that trigger a particular mode of responding like um, i'm trying to think of Panic. an example uh, and not even that it's um habitual ways of being you yeah. know sometimes we get stuck in patterns of um following a, you know like having an argument with your partner for instance you know they might say a particular word or a phrase or something that sparks a particular reaction in you and makes you respond or you choose mm. mostly unconsciously to react to whatever the trigger word or phrase or tone of voice or non-compliance or non-action, whatever it is, in a particular way. And it's a repeating pattern. It's mm -hmm. a pattern that you've learned. Okay, this person gives me this input, which means I give them this output. And the, the key is to actually notice. Yeah. Ah, oh, when this happens, I'm doing this. Yeah. And it always makes me feel like this i don't like how this feels sure. i'd rather feel like this i need to change it so what ha what has to change for me to get from here to here yeah and, and, it's, and always, then you step it back. it's always i it's that's always right us. it don't change the partner change you yeah. it's the way you are choosing to react to whatever the the mm. stimulus is whether it's your partner whether it's a workplace whether it's road rage whatever it is the only thing that you have control of is your response yeah. to that and your ability to develop the capacity to change. Yeah, to observe, I think. Yeah, it, you know, it's really that capacity building. Yeah. yeah. We have to observe the chant. We have to observe. We have to be First observant. Of all, yeah, notice mm -hmm. and then be observant because with the noticing, we move back into present moment with the, um, and then observe how we're responding because how we're responding often is like you say subconscious yeah um but this is not complex because if we 
break it right down to the beginnings. It's about feeling. It's about how do we feel about this? What is the right decision to make? You know, and often it's not that we need to go, it's always my fault or it's always this or it's always that. No. It's just about going, okay, well, this is what it is. How do we deal with it? What are we going to do? And it doesn't have to be complex uh, or a complex situation to do that when we can just do that all of the time. It's just about being in that present. And I know I bang on about present moment, but it saves us so much drama when we are in the present moment and we have the capacity to make change, you know, in a much gent more gentler way. Absolutely. And I think sometimes with a lot of this stuff, it gets too complicated. There are too many things you have to remember. There are too many steps. Mm. And we're already remembering far too many PIN numbers, okay? <laughs> so how are we going to remember all of this? We just have yeah. to feel how it feels. Mm -hmm. And if it feels like it's the right thing to do, then it is the right thing to do at this moment in time. There are no wrong decisions because at that moment in time when you decided to make that decision about whatever it was, at that moment, that was the right moment. That was in that present moment, that was the right decision to make. So how can we judge ourselves? You know, how, why do we then look back and re reflect poorly on the choices that we've made when really we should be looking back going, oh, well, I learned from that. Mm. You know, I don't need to do it again. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. Tip. You know, and that well, that's a conversation for another day about releasing True. releasing judgment. Um, but focusing on the um, where do we have control? I think you know the the very potent first step is, as Margaret said, the observing, and the very next step from that is to take a breath. Yes, I agree. You need to give yourself space. So you know, this doesn't happen overnight. It is a skill because um, we like to like to run on convenience and ease which is often going into our habitual patterns yeah so it does take um a really clear decision to make that change well i think the i think the way that humans survive though is on their patterns yes you know exactly we develop pat pattern. yeah we develop patterns though so it's interesting you say that because mm. we need to function you know we we have routine which creates patterns you know um we do this right from when babies are born we establish patterns for them you know for them to get into a you know a routine and all of that you know this is something that humans do organically as a way of survival as a way of you know a means of survival mm -hmm. um but what we're aiming for here you know i think at this point in our history um humanity is really at a tipping point it's at a tipping point of evolution of staying in our instinctive survival pattern or stepping up to be something more than just surviving yeah no i agree with you at that point yeah. at that level, at that I level. Think from a survival point of view absolutely i think yeah. we need to change we need to we need to embrace so yeah um, and this is about that um, and i actually think that comes back to trust and i think it comes back to sovereignty yeah I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, trust, I think trust and sovereignty. Eh? They're you interlinked. Know, they're absolutely interlinked. Yeah. I don't yeah, think yeah. you can have one without the other because, you know, trust um, initiates or, develop, you know, aids in the production or, or the awareness of um, mm. sovereignty and sovereignty, you know, feeds on the trust. So it's, you know, there is no chicken and egg here. They're the same or they're... they're well, it's like yin and yang, yeah, isn't it? It yeah. is. It's and more then, yin and yang. You know, yang, when yeah. you have that trust judgment goes out the window it does that's yeah. right yeah so you know everything is interlinked but you know this idea of being in control and being dictated to by fear yes you know that that's kind of it's a control mechanism at the moment for for the human animal we want to actually become the human human and to um take individual control of ourselves so really sovereignty is what we're talking about um, which requires independent thought, independent feeling and independent movement. Yeah, I agree. And I, It's a lovely way to put it. Yeah. I, do I need to expand on that? I don't know. Does she need to expand on that? <laughs> no, let me know if I do. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's not enough for us anymore to go yeah but that's that's how humanity survives that's how human beings survive it's a survival skill that's not good enough anymore 
You know, we are all being asked to step up into something different. So at an individual level, we're being asked to first observe and then make a change. Indeed. And you I know, think the collective. That, that's it. Yeah. And, and then from at the there, collective. The ripple effect. It's that old yeah. thing, you know, think globally, act locally. Yeah, is to move beyond the instinctive human animal. Yeah to the feeling human human yeah i agree yeah feelings will never lead us astray no that's that, how it's interesting that, yeah a lot of what we talk about mm. is how it feels in the body if you're feeling it in the body there's something that you need to listen to yeah absolutely yeah. uh that's that's where the clarity comes in being in touch with the body it is yeah it is. yeah it is interesting how the evolution of all of this, all these thought storms are coming together with what's going on environmentally. Mm. You know, or, you know, it's almost, it, well, it is universal. Um, we're being pushed um, to let go or drop off or clear out all of these old ways and embrace a new way of being mm. in a way that is positive and productive. Um and yeah. so i mean a lot of what we're talking about today is actually shadow work yes so you know it's it is delving into those areas of our individual selves that are a little bit dark and a little bit scary because we've pushed stuff down there that we don't want to deal with um and often when we bring the light of truth down into the, the shadows um what we find is really powerful and transformative exciting and exciting and you know and it's it's, it's the idea of fear that has stopped us from tapping into this incredible wellspring of mm. truth yeah yeah and you know it's a similar thing that's happening at the collective level at the collective level at the moment fear has been brought right to the surface for the human animal to deal with yeah you know, to, this is our transformative moment as a collective to move beyond the human in, animal instinctive response or reaction to fear and to find, well, how does the feeling human choose to respond collectively to this idea of fear? Yeah. Yeah. I think honouring fear, I think one of the, I always see emotions like children, you mm -hmm. know, mummy, mm mummy, -hmm. mummy, I need a drink. Here's a drink and they go you know, or they go off and play or do something else. And I think emotions in lots of ways are the same. So rather than beating ourselves up about the fact that we feel fear, I think we should just be reveling in the fact that we can feel these emotions, honouring them and letting them know that we don't need them as anymore, that we're okay. One of the things that I really like about fear is, you know, it's the flip side of excitement. Yeah. So at a physiological level, the body doesn't actually know the difference between fear and excitement. Yeah. The, the physiological response is often very similar. It is, yeah. And so a part of our um, embracing the feeling of fear is to look for those opportunities where we can flip it, yeah. where it can actually be an expression of absolute excitement and exhilaration that all of a sudden there's an opportunity instead of something being closed down and blocked off because yeah. of fear, because we're too scared to open that box or we're too scared mm -hmm. to look around that corner or turn the light on or turn the light off. Yeah. It's the case maybe <laughs> if you're scared of the dark. Um, but, you know, there, I think that's one of the next natural progressions after, you know, seeing it and noticing it, taking a breath and giving yourself um space capacity to be able to make a choice is to then think well is this actually a fear response or am i actually really excited about the possibilities yeah. in front of me true you know true. and obviously we're not going to see that in everything that comes our way but the more we choose to turn away from fear and look for a different response the more open to uh, or the more opportunity opportunities come yes you know what i mean we, we're able to manifest too. all of a sudden yeah the this idea of universal flow and of being in flow um is a body felt experience rather than something that we're striving to attain it yes. is something that you're actually present and enveloped in and more 
But you need to stay, we need to stay conscious. Yeah, We're it always, is a yeah, conscious thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we must always stay conscious. It we don't. It gets easier. Yeah, it does. Everything it just, just gets, gets easier. easier. Things get simpler. Life is freer. That's and the it's freedom. More satisfying. It is. Satisfying yeah. and fulfilling. And, mm -hmm. and also to reflect back and recognize that that was how we were then and this is how we are now is actually quite um, uh, freeing as well. And going, you know, this is, it's all about the growth. It's all about us, you know, experiencing each individual moment of each individual day, you know, within our lives, with the people that we're with at any moment in time. Mm. Um, and it gives us, it brings a great, a great deal of joy when we're in that moment, when we're present. When we're actually experiencing the truth of the moment as opposed to moving through in kind of a sleepwalk, yeah. sort of, engage yeah. in just a habitual pattern yeah. of this is how I do my life. Yeah. You know, we're actually present in the moment going, this is my life. Let's, um, yeah. let's do something different. <laughs> let's enjoy it. Whatever that means Every for everybody. Yeah. Moment. Let's just do something different. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing, I think there's nothing worse than doing the same thing every day and thinking you're making a difference if you're not happy. If you're not mm, enjoy, mm. you know, if you're not enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, the opportunity to change is always there. Yeah, and to embrace the change too, yeah. you know. And I think fear helps us to get to that point where we get tired of it, we get fed up, you know, we're worn out. And so we need to embrace the change. Um, mm. And we get to a point where fear pushes us in that direction. It pushes us off the cliff so we can fly, mm -hmm. you know. We mm. do it anyway. And, you know, the interesting thing about that is here's, here's an opportunity to scare the pants off yourself by jumping off the cliff. Yeah. The next cliff that comes your way will be even bigger. Yeah. But you can still do it. But you'll fly further. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's very cool. So, you know, you don't completely, it's not like we become fearless. It's um, recognising fear for what it is. You know that phrase, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. Well, it's a bit more than that. It's actually recognising and honouring fear yes. because it's a valuable teaching tool um, but also acknowledging that, well, fear, you've kept me safe and that's great. Thank you very much. Um, but got, I'm ready to be excited now. Yeah, you, yeah, you've got to where you, I am now. Yeah. I need more. You know, I still keep coming back to the, well, what's the practice? practical application of what we're talking about particularly in the current environment where there is this um, huge level of fear and it it feels like the walls are closing in in relation to um you know certain choices that we have to make so you know that the, this is a this is a real in your face fear yeah i think for a lot sitting with fear i think sitting with fear is a good thing to do i think sitting with it so like, how, how do you do that well, how I do it is I sit, I breathe, so I bring my mind and body back together at all levels and I feel how it feels in my body. Mm. And from that point then I ask the universe, if I can't reconcile that myself, I'll then hand it up to the universe and wait for an answer. Um, but if I can reconcile it, I look for the... On the periphery of the fear, there is always joy. There's always something else that we haven't considered. There's always, you know, and I often think fear is like a roadblock or it's like a um, one of those humps in the middle of the road. We have to slow down. We have to take a breath. We have to go, okay, I'm feeling fear. Such why a am beautiful I doing this? analogy. Yeah, I why am that. I doing this? Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, I actually don't want to go down the rest of that road. There's mm. too many humps. I'll turn and go somewhere else instead. You know, so sometimes it can be really valuable tool for us in, if we when we take that time to just sit with it and I say that with all emotions you know every emotion not just the negative ones if we sit with it we really get to understand what it is for us the importance of that for us and that's you know that's the beauty or the benefit or the silver lining um, of all of our emotions as far as I'm concerned mm. in that we have that opportunity to grow from experiencing those emotions you know I see a lot of people who can't feel anything and when they start to feel it's like the whole world has opened up again yeah it's like getting another sense back 
Um, and well, it is. Yeah. Really? So fear Feeling. is not a. I don't think fear is a bad thing. I just no, think it's... it can overwhelm us. Yes. But then so can our ego. You know. <laughs> so can everything overwhelm us. Yeah. Um, boredom. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think it's just one of those things that we need to engage with at whatever we need to engage with. So however we do it at a personal level and always remembering that, you know, when we're managing or we're processing our fear and we're growing from that and we're changing, we're actually the ripple effect of that is we're having an impact on other people as well. Absolutely. And that's really, really important. And a lot of the things in our world are set up around fear-based mm -hmm. belief structures mm -hmm. and it's really difficult to kind of meld your or work your way through those structures when you need them because it's all fear-based. Well, all that's, about. that's the existing paradigm that we're in. Yeah. The existing paradigm is one that is built on control and fear and fear is used as a tool of control. So by us recognising that yeah. and choosing personal freedom or sovereignty or individual responsibility, however you want to put it, yeah. Um, that's how we take back our control, right? For what it for what it's worth. Yeah. Let's let's just deal with the illusion yeah. for the moment because otherwise it gets really <laughs> really hard to talk about. Um, and develop the skill within ourselves mm -hmm. to recognize fear and to make choices. Yeah. So you know, for me, when I feel fear. I really feel it. like I feel my heart rate increasing. I feel my breath <gasps> do this. I feel the adre the adrenals. It literally feels like the adrenals are giving me a kick in the back. Um, and, you know, that cold, clammy sweat thing that goes on when you're really feeling the fear. I allow myself to feel it but not to be overwhelmed by it and then to say, oh, I recognise this. Yeah. I actually reckon this is fear. I'm afraid. Mm. I'm really fearful of this decision because of what I think might happen. Okay, so <sighs> deep breath, connect to the ground, really allow myself to feel grounded, become present, feel myself solid, and if necessary, sit in the root chakra. You know, mm. the root chakra is the place to deal with fear. Really take my attention, my awareness, my energy down into the root chakra so that the physiological response can subside yeah and i can actually go okay right i can breathe properly again i can think clearly about what's going on you're in the present moment aren't i'm you? in the present moment and sometimes i like to take it um, a little step further so you know i will sit there in the comfort of the present moment and then take my attention to right that decision no i'm the immediate fear response comes up okay i'm actually going to do something about that because I don't like it and it's holding me back. This, this, I need to make this decision because I can see an outcome I want by making this decision, but I'm too scared to make the decision because of what might happen. Yes. You know? So I that's where I pull in tapping. For me, tapping yeah. helps me really actually move that through the physiology of my body, move it through my nervous system to a place where I can feel at ease and actually look at the decision again and go, right, now without the absence of it's going to kill me if I do this, input from fear, I can make a better decision and feel comfortable about the decision because I see the outcome that I want, I see a possible consequence and another possible consequence and another possible consequence, but I'm prepared to live with those consequences, yeah. you know. So for me, um, I like to actually take physical um control sometimes we need physical to do that. input yeah sometimes we need to you know it, we sometimes make, yeah. it's not enough for me to actually just breathe and be in the moment sometimes yeah. i do need that additional tool and that's perfectly fine yeah but the important thing is i'm not squashing down i'm acknowledging yes. i'm really feeling this and i can see how it's holding me back but every time i go to make that choice nope it's still really present mm. So I need to actually work with that. And I think the tapping enables me to acknowledge the fear, to really feel it, really actually sink into the depths of what that fear actually feels mm -hmm. like in the body, what the physiological response is, what the emotional response to that is. There's often a lot of, a lot of mm -hmm. tears come with this. Um, but then, then to help my body 
release it because we've spent a lifetime in the Western society, particularly as women, training ourselves to clamp our emotions down, to clamp those feelings down and to focus on what other people are feeling. Yeah. So tapping need to, yeah. is a very powerful way to deal with that. Yeah. And there are a lot of other um, oh, yeah, somatic absolutely. techniques out there, but for me that's, yeah. that's my go-to tool at the moment. I think that's great. I mean, mm. exercise is another thing. You know, when they look at treating trauma, um, you know, um, PTSD or um, any other form of trauma, you know, they talk about um, exercise, making sure that you're moving so that your body can process the information. So anything that Absolutely. allows your body to move, anything that gives body. you... It's yeah. the body. Gives you gives that release yeah. um, is is highly yeah. beneficial um, yeah. at helping yeah. to resolve those things and getting us to that point where we feel okay about um, the decision that we want to make or have to make. Mm. Um, and we feel, you know, I think when we feel that that decision is the right decision to make, then it is the right decision to make. Um, and how we get to that point is. Um, again very personal a very personal thing you know whatever we need to do um you know i hand up to the universe um sometimes i'll go to the gym or i'll go for a walk or and the physical activity helps me to resolve the you know the unresolved fear um um, in relation to whatever I'm making a decision about. Mm. Um, but sometimes all I need to do is hand it up to the universe because I trust implicitly 100%. Yeah. So that kind of stuff I think is... But that's also a skill that you've learned. Yes, yes. You know, you, it's easy for you to say, I'll just hand it up to the universe. But in saying that, you've you've had many, many years of practice of developing that skill of trust. Indeed. And yes. of how to actually work with the, the physiology of the feeling. Indeed, yes. yes. I so, will say, though, it isn't you know, that difficult to hand it up to the trust, uh, hand it up to the universe, because when you actually do hand it up, so when you visualise, you know, mm. and initially I visualised popping, popping it into a balloon or attaching mm -hmm. a balloon to it and letting it float away, um, the relief that you felt um, about letting it go up there mm -hmm. and knowing that there'll be an answer coming back it's the forming of the memory of that relief that yeah, your body that feels helps. um that makes it the next time around it makes it easier more that powerful makes, too. makes it easier yeah. you know and so it's practice it's like riding a bike it's practice you know all of these tools are practice tapping is practice yeah. everything is practice and the other key to that handing it up to the universe and having trust is to let go of the expectations yeah, yeah. you know it, it's not okay to hand stuff up to the universe and say but it's only going to work properly if it comes out this way yeah or you actually, have to universe, actually really let it yeah, go yeah <laughs> and I, I think handing up to the universe is easier if you if you if you already if you do trust but yeah. again trust grows with practice trust grows with you living in flow with you listening to mm. yourself and understanding how does this feel you know, is yeah. it does is this the right thing for me to be doing right now? Uh, just for now, I need to do this. You know, it's about honouring oneself, which in essence is about everything we talk about on the existential cuppa. Because ultimately, we have to honour ourselves to be able to do any of this stuff. It doesn't mean we don't fall off the horse, um, and we need to get put back on. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that we need to keep practicing it all the time. Mm. And you're right. I have been doing this for years. But I keep falling off the horse. <laughs> of course. You know, I'm not of a course, good horse rider. <laughs> if you put a saddle on, it's a bit yeah. easier. I, I found that out when in my youth, in my young you days. Know, so, but we all do. We all take three steps forward, two steps back, three yeah. steps forward, two steps back. You know, it's okay. It's, it is. it's totally fine. It is fine. what it is, isn't it? It is. It's actually mm. okay for all of this to be the way that it is for you right now. It doesn't have to be any other way. It just has to be your way. And that you can honour it the way that you need to honour it and feel good about that. Absolutely. And that's the most important thing, I think. You know, fear is just another tool, another feeling, another way of, you know, uh, managing our world. Yeah. You know, or mastering our world. I like that word better than yeah. manage or control. Yeah. And, mastering and I world. love the, the way you've connected fear and mastery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and awesome. before we go, guys, um, oh, I thank you. <laughs> came to Linda's and I found this book, and uh, it's a lovely, pretty little book uh, or magazine, I should say. And I discovered <laughs> in the book when Bless I was reading you. it, 
Oh, how do I make this work? Yeah, I know. This is Linda's article in the book, and it is amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, thank you. It is really, really good, and it is well worth a read because it puts a lot of stuff into perspective and it gives you the freedom to do or the permission to do exactly how you feel you want to be or do. Oh, thank so you. it's well worth reading. Speechless. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Margaret. Thank oh, you. that's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that seems to be a nice end point. It does, yes. Yeah, I think we've um, we've wrapped our head around fear and control and personal freedom this afternoon quite well. And, you know, from some of the stuff that came up, Perhaps trust is the next thing. I think so. To maybe. talk about. Mm. So we'd love to know what you think. We'd love to know if you have questions about any of the things that we talked about today. Um, do you want us to talk about trust next time, or should we be looking at some other avenue? Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Uh, it's been a wonderful conversation. It has, as always. And I feel like, yeah, we've explored fear kind of nicely. Yeah, both at the individual and the collective. Um, so we're going to leave you for that. Okay. We were in flow. Yeah, we were in flow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much if you joined us live. Um, it's been a pleasure to have your company. And if you're catching up on the replay, we will come back through and answer any questions. So don't hesitate, pop them in, and uh, we'll get back to you. Until next Friday. See, see you later. Have a great time. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye.